Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Ash Polson and John Cartwright to discuss Nintendo's Switch Indie Spring Showcase. So, let's get started. And, man, they started this thing off in a big way. Right off the bat, announcing Cuphead, and then ending it all off with Cadence of Hyrule, which is a indie-developed Zelda game. And, I don't know, guys, this feels like a really, really good Indies showcase. Maybe it's just because they had some really big ones. The middle part kind of dragged a little bit, but overall, I'd say this was a good presentation. Yeah, yeah. there's some great stuff in there. And um, not only were there some big games from both ports and big IPs, but I think and there's some games that sort of caught all of our attention, too, that we never heard of before. Like All of us were really feeling the Red Lantern, which is a... Yes. Um, well, I mean, we, we don't even really know what it is. It seems like you're like you're surviving with a pack of dogs, like carrying your sledge. But we um, we were just into it from the moment, like from the moment that it started. Just the vibe felt really good for this game. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, like I was instantly sold the minute I saw it was a game about dogs. Like <laughs> that's all I need. It's a game about dogs. What more do you need? And I got kind of a Celeste esque vibe from the whole, I don't know, from the whole emotionality of the trailer and just I guess just the whole. Yeah, the vibe of it. it very much reminded me of Celeste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got that same sense too. Uh, I've seen a lot of people compare it to Firewatch as well. So I, I think we're in for something special with this game. This, I think this has a lot of potential. Uh, it's a very unique setting with the whole Iditarod going on. And I was immediately invested because of the stupid bear attacking <laughs> that, that uh, dog. I'm like, no, uh-huh. get away from him. Yeah, I, I won't you. let any dogs get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, 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 it really grabbed my attention. But I don't think that's the thing that everybody's talking about. Instead, everybody's talking about Cuphead and Cadence of Hyrule. So let's let's talk about Cuphead first because that was how they started this whole thing off. We got this kind of weird how to drink milk thing that was very tongue in cheek, and then just jumped right into it. And boy, Cuphead on the Switch is such a perfect decision. God, it really is. Yeah, like this is a game about um, not just playing through it normally, but playing through it with a friend. And um, the Cuphead designs are both red and blue, which is perfect for the Switch's Joy-Con. Mm-hmm. This just seems like a brilliant match for the Switch, and they're also bringing, bringing in some Xbox Live features as well. In fact, just after the presentation, Major Nelson, as part of the Xbox crew, uh, said they're going to be you're going to like be able to earn Xbox Live achievements on the Nintendo Switch, which you could do in Minecraft. But it's great to see that it like expand out to more games. So it's going to be so weird to be playing on a Switch and earning Xbox Live achievements in Carpet. It's it's a weird, brave new world. It's so weird to think we can we have that kind of Xbox functionality or will have that kind of functionality on the Switch. And I mean, I can't think of another Xbox or former Xbox and PC exclusive that is a better fit for the Switch. Like, I mean, I really want Ori, obviously, but like. Other than that, it's Cuphead, and I'm so excited that it's finally here, or will be. Mm-hmm. Next month. One yeah, month next away. month. Exactly. Yeah. Not yeah, not that long away, and I, I got it on PC. Didn't play too much of it, but because I, I always floated around the idea of maybe streaming it. But I, I'm totally picking this up again on the Switch. This is a perfect fit. I loved what I played of that game. Uh, it has it, it's challenging, but it's just the right amount of challenging, and I, I am really excited to play more of it. And the fact that you have Microsoft playing so nice with Nintendo, the fact that there's going to be an update later to put in the Xbox Live features is a really cool idea, and I think it shows the potential. Maybe we will get Ori. Maybe we will see Banjo-Kazooie or main Xbox franchise on the Switch. You don't know at this point. It is a completely brave new world <laughs> with this whole yeah. thing. Now, granted, Cuphead is, on, uh, is more on the indie side of things, so it's hard to say if Banjo-Kazooie would make it over, but, mm, boy. <laughs> There's too much yeah. smoke around Ori for Ori not to happen. And um, Totally. Now we have Cuphead, I have zero doubts that Ori in the Blind Forest and maybe Word of the Wisps are on the way. I have a, I have a feeling, um, if Ori in the Blind Forest is coming, it's probably coming soon, because I don't mm-hmm. think any of us would have guessed that Cuphead was just one month away at this point. No, absolutely not. I feel like it's it's probably coming, and it's probably coming sooner sooner rather than later. And what's mm-hmm. funny is that the, the longer this strange but awesome alliance continues, the worse Sony continues to look. Like, uh-huh. they've really got to get it together and figure out a way to play nice, because Microsoft and Nintendo have figured it out. Very much their own things, but still, like, helping each other out. Exactly. And that's pretty fun. <laughs> that's, that's actually really cool, and... I mean, it makes me feel good as a PlayStation and Switch owner. I don't have the Xbox, but hey, all of a sudden I'm getting Xbox <laughs> benefits. That's cool. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so excited for uh, Cuphead and playing more of that game. And then, of course, we ended it all off with Cadence of Hyrule. So, mm, I, yeah. <laughs> I've never played Crypt of the Necrodancer, but uh, what I've seen of this game, it, the the uh, pixel, the, the the graphics look great. It's a great style. Uh, I had this great Telltale Heights remix, and I, I don't know, it just pulled me right in, and I, I'm totally getting this game. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I don't need to tell you guys, I am there moment one. I mean, it's a rhythm game, it's Zelda, it's a Zelda rhythm game, what more could I possibly want? I am this so is, this into this. This is a this. you game, Ash. Oh, 180 <laughs> million percent, I'm so excited, and I've uh, I've seen Crypt of the Necrodancer, and I've, I've always had it in my radar, but I haven't actually gotten to play it, and now I know that I absolutely need to, so just to prepare for Cadence of Hyrule. And man, I can't believe we're getting an indie Zelda rhythm game. I could not be more hyped about that. Mm-hmm. And I love how they introduced it too. Because um, when the trailer starts, it kind of feels like a, a, a Crypt of the Necrodancer sequel rather than just a, um, a merge with Zelda. Because you're in a crypt, it has the same sort of um, drum like beating soundtrack, which is how you play Crypt of the Necrodancer. And then you go outside and all of a sudden you're in Hyrule. And it sort of slowly introduces all these Zelda enemies. You hear the Zelda. You, see, you hear um, is it Tao Tao Heights that you hear? Um, yeah. And it's just like slowly introducing all this stuff, and then eventually Link and Zelda just show up. It's just so good too. And the the visuals are a evolution over the original game, because Crypt of the Necrodancer went for this almost eight bit kind of style, whereas this to me feels like sort of sixteen bit plus. I'd say, like it, it it clearly is like taking inspiration from a Super Nintendo kind of look, but it's modernized. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it looks really good. And if you guys haven't played Crypt of the Necrodancer, basically there's this beat that's constantly going. And with every single beat, that's an opportunity to move. So when you hear a drum, that means you can either go left, right, up or down, or attack. And you can't do anything within those um, lols. So basically, you're, 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 uh, you're adventuring through these caverns and caves and open worlds, all while sort of like going to this rhythm. And it's, it's such a weird mix, but it works really well. I can see it working so well with all this Zelda stuff going on as well. And I like the art style they've gone with it. It's kind of giving me a slight Minish Cap vibe, which I think is the perfect mm. fit for a game like this. You know, they, they kind of age down Link and Zelda again. You know, this isn't the older Breath of the Wild or Twilight Princess style versions. Like, I think that really works for this game. And yeah, I just love everything I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. I mean, playable Zelda just right off the bat. That's cool. Equipping her with a spear, giving her those magic attacks. Like, I'm sorry, that's the character I'm going to be playing because she looks so cool. Yeah. Uh, You don't get that chance much. And it's what a great new Nintendo we're dealing with. They're allowing an indie studio of all things to work with The Legend of Zelda. Like, how much must have Crypto and Necrodancer impress them that they Mm. went with this? (laughs) And what an opportunity for the developers. Like, imagine how they feel having the Zelda IP in their possession. And what does this mean for other indie studios? Like, could we see Team Cherry, the Hollow Knight team? Could they be doing Metroid? Could Sheenan be doing F-Zero? Like, think of yes, the opportunities now. Please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Sheenan, I mean, they could do Wave Race as well. Like, you know, they could right. do... God, we're even bring back 1080 snowboarding. I mean, I know we're getting really crazy here, but <laughs> no, there there are so many possibilities here. And you know, if Nintendo doesn't have the the bandwidth to, to you know do this themselves, definitely makes sense for them to find indie studios they trust to take over for you know certain projects. Or even mm-hmm. just like it fills in the gaps. We have these yeah. smaller games to hold us over until the next big one. And you know, Link's Awakening kind of fills that niche as well. But it's you know, it's a remake. But this is something brand new, interesting, and allowing the indie developer to so, so, sort of show what they're capable of. And I, I want to see more. <laughs> I want to see what other indie studios could do with Nintendo IPs and what what might fit best with which IP. And oh man. I love how much potential this opens up. <laughs> uh-huh. Me too. Do you think the reaction to this would be worse if we were two years after Breath of the Wild and we didn't know Link's Awakening was happening? Like if this was the Zelda game that came two years after Breath of the Wild and we didn't know of anything else? I don't think so, because, I mean, you know, it, it came during a Nindy showcase. I don't think anybody would, like, mistake Cadence of Hyrule for, like, the next big Zelda game. I, I kind of feel like there were, the confidence would remain that there's another Nintendo-developed Zelda game coming soonish. Yeah. And it's not really the same uh, situations like with Metroid because Metroid had been dormant for so long. So when Federation Force is revealed, it's like, what the hell? Why can't we get our actual Metroid game? 
uh, or our, our traditional Metroid game. So I don't think because this is specifically an indie game, I don't think it would it would have you know generated any ne or many negative feelings. You know, there's someone out there who'd be pissed, but mm -hmm. generally, yeah, I think giving I think, the internet too yeah. much credit here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are a few people. <laughs> there are a few people, yeah. but I think on the whole, I think people would understand. Like, nah, this is not the next main Zelda uh -huh. game. Mm -hmm. Of course. This is, yeah, Zelda comes out with enough frequ frequency that, you know, it's like, oh no, Zelda's going in this way forever. No, <laughs> it's just, yeah. this is a nice spinoff uh, with a fun art style, uh, some really interesting gameplay, and, you know, they, they, they gave a little blurb about it, and we are getting 25 remixed Legend of Zelda tracks, and I'm, I'm excited to hear what they're like. It's, you know, it's not a lot of music, but I think they can do a lot with it. And we also don't know if this is the entirety of the soundtrack. Like those are twenty-five Zelda tracks, but we could have some Crypt of the Necrodancer tracks. We could have some like original compositions as well. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what tracks they choose because there's obviously a lot to choose from in Zelda. I would imagine they're probably going to go with maybe like a Link to the Past style tracks or something of that era rather than modern stuff. Because mm -hmm. that that just seems to sort of translate a bit better to um, the the genre of music they're going for with this game. Interesting, because I, I was actually kind of thinking, like, would, would get songs like Ballad of the Goddess from Skyward Sword and and possibly, hmm. you know, stuff like Midna's theme from, well, maybe not that. I don't know how, how well that would translate, but I don't know. I kind of feel like stuff like Ocarina of Time and, you know, and Ford is fair game because so much of the music that people love from the series comes from those games as well. So I kind of feel like they'd be limiting themselves if they, if they only stuck to the SNES, you know, or maybe. I should say Link to the Past, Link's Awakening era. I think we'll have a interesting mix we kind of got that with Hyrule Warriors and that was a fun soundtrack as well so I'm pretty confident with this one and you know everybody talks about how great the Crypt of the Necrodancers music is so this it feels like it's in safe hands uh, with this whole thing I'm pretty confident about this one and it's coming really soon so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try this out yeah I'm, I'm all about it I'm yeah I can't wait mm -hmm. now I'd say among all of us the next game that really excited us is definitely uh, Blaster Master Zero Two, which hell yes get, is getting a surprise release today. That's awesome, and it's it's only ten bucks. Yeah, like Blaster Master Zero, the original was a great game, and I love when well, I just love Inti Creates in general, and the fact that we're getting a sequel today for ten bucks, I'm I'm in. I I can't wait. It looks so ambitious too. Like it still has the retro style of of Blaster Master Zero. But they're clearly like, unleashing their potential here. There's like there's so many bullets on screen. There's um there's layers going on. Like you can see stuff in the foreground, in the background. It feels like uh, a Super Nintendo game on steroids. And uh, I love how they're sort of, as you said that they're sort of shadow dropping this today. And they did a very similar thing with the original Blaster Master Zero, where it was more or less a Switch launch title. I think it might be like around that launch period. Yeah. Mm. But um, they announced like a week beforehand, and it's like this is just a way to release a game like this, I suppose. But yeah, it looks so interesting, and I wouldn't have ever suspected they'll do a sequel to this, but um, I'm, I'm all for it. No, same here, and it kind of makes me wonder, because I, I'm pretty sure Mighty Gunvolt Burst has done well, it makes me wonder if maybe they're working on a sequel nope. to that too, which <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't want it, Derek, I'm all about I'll be it. for it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, what's interesting here is, um, you know, we're getting Blaster Master Zero 2, complete surprise, but Integrates already announced, like months ago, uh, Gunvolt Chronicles Luminous Avenger IX, which is, you know, aka the Copen game, and... That was announced months ago, and we didn't hear anything about that, and we still haven't. So that was kind of a surprise to me. I mean, they, they've got their hand in so many different pies at this point. Who knows right. what, what's coming and all that. So Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely cool. I'm definitely going to be checking this out because I really enjoyed the original Blaster Masters era. Although I can't remember. I know I got the bad ending. I can't remember if I ever went back and got the good ending. <laughs> I don't think I did either. But there were, what Ash was saying just then, I, I don't think we had any um, recurring games in this presentation. I think everything here is pretty much a new reveal. Mm -hmm. like even Cuphead yeah. is a, that's a Switch reveal. So like games like Untitled Goose Game, I guess they're already known, so people just don't, they just don't really want to show them off. Yeah, and right, they, they right. probably don't have a solid release date yet, so it makes sense to just hold off on it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, not everything was looked amazing in this one. I, <laughs> I think none of us are really on, like, Double Fine's rad. Yeah, yeah I wasn't like feeling it. that. Yeah, yeah that, that's the thing. I, I went into it, so it was a double fine game. It's like, oh, I want to be into this. The character designs look kind of cool, but it's just so muddy looking. And yeah. uh, just not really that impressed. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and what's interesting, too, is that Devolver Digital had two games in the presentation, and one looked awesome, and one looked eh. And the one that looked eh is my friend Pedro. I know they're, like, you know, super excited about it. I know it's, like, supposed to be really edgy and stuff, but the gameplay wasn't doing it for me. But then you get to Katana Zero, and holy crap, that game looks cool. <laughs> like, the pixel animation is beautiful. You've got this, like, you know, you're, you're this fast-moving samurai. you got these flashy attacks bounding around, you know, the screen. And then you've got this time... Uh, it looks like this time rewind ability where if you get hit and you die, you can just rewind and try something different. And God, this game looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Poor thing stands no chance, though. <laughs> it nope, comes out the sure same day as Cuphead. Doesn't. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me of uh, Bandai Namco releasing Katamari Damacy Reroll on the same day as Smash Ultimate. Oh, like, God, who would yeah. do that? <laughs> I think it still did okay, though. So maybe there's That's a different good. audience. It might do all right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, might. Cuphead is Cuphead's one of the biggest games in here. Probably the biggest game in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or maybe not, maybe Cadence of Fire. Yeah, Cadence but, of Fire, yeah. I think, has a beat. But of all the others, definitely the biggest. Uh huh. And, you know, I mean, it's. it's it looks fun. Uh, I think it's going to be at, at PAX East, so we'll definitely check that out. But um, yeah, unfortunately, it has a bit of an uphill battle. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. As for the other games, nothing else really called out to me. Like, we talked about Red Lantern and how that looked fun. Stranger Things 3, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say the the one other game that did kind of stand out to me was Swim Sanity. And it just looks like a really, it looks like a well-designed, just really tight four-player co-op game, you know, that takes, that takes place underwater. And I don't know, like, it may turn out to be nothing big, and but it, I don't know, it just, it uh, it caught my attention more than the, the rest of the other games. And it mm. could be cool. I think this presentation as a whole has set a great standard for Nindy's presentations, and hopefully people will keep tuning in. Because opening with Cuphead and closing with Cadence of Hyrule, like, those... Those are just so like so big announcements. They could be they could be an actual directs if they if they wanted them to be. So hopefully this is set a new standard. And hopefully more people will tune into these presentations in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I like how uh, the way they presented them as well. Like, they had some fun little skits in between. They actually brought in some of the developers to talk about their games. They found a good groove here. No, I totally agree. It, it really feels like they're not only like embracing the indie community in terms of you know having such a great indie lineup on the Switch, but also really wanting to get their perspectives on their own games. They're not just announcing games, they're really going in and, and talking to the developers about the context surrounding them, and I really like that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I will say, uh, there is one other game that did catch my eye a little bit, and that's uh, Blood Roots, which was that game where the guy with the wolf pelt on his head is jumping all around and using every item oh, yeah. avail- at his disposable, as okay. disposable in interesting ways. I, I like the frenetic action of that. So that could be fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be uh-huh. like the next big thing, but for something fun and different, yeah, it's cool. It seemed very free flowing. Like you could just keep moving around, and pretty much everything was interactive. And it looked like you can die quite easily. So I can imagine just how much you have to improvise and just use whatever you can to get around. So yeah, that that's, that's one to watch. I think. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. Any other th- of these games that stood out to you guys? I think those are the major ones, but yeah. you know, all of those look really good, and I want to keep a really close eye on the Red Lantern, because as you guys said, the vibe just looks so engrossing. But yeah, there's lots of stuff here. Uh, not not much until April, really, apart from Blaster Master, mm-hmm. but you know, that's not too far away, just one month. And it, it looks like we're going to have a great flow of games coming up, uh, not only in the indie scene, but just in the AAA scene too. So all, all bases are pretty much covered for the Switch. Yeah, basically we just have to make it to the end of March and then we'll be good to go. And Blaster Master Zero 2 should get us there. And then, you know, we got, yeah, April's the Red Lantern. Yeah, I'm basically going to be watching the Red Lantern and Katana Zero very closely because I'm <laughs> super excited about both. And yeah, until then, we've got Blaster Master, which is great. Yeah. And actually, Nuclear Throne also came out today, which I don't really know much about. But hey, it's, an, it's a, another game out today that people can check out. And it looked like, a, you know, pretty fanatic fun. So why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'd say overall... A good Nindy's presentation, and uh, definitely some things to keep an eye out on, but boy, I can't wait for Cadence of Hyrule and Cuphead. <laughs> mm-hmm. Me too. All right. Well, any other th- uh, things you guys want to say about this uh, Nindy's Direct or Nindy's Showcase? Uh, just one thing, and that, that is uh, shame on both of you for not having gotten Blaster Master Zero's good ending, and you should go back and do that before you play <laughs> Zero Two. <laughs> I feel like I should. I, I mean, I still have yeah. my save file, so I don't think it'll take too long, but... Nice. And it is actually a really cool, like, you get a whole extra world and, like, final boss. It's really cool. Nice. 
Uh-huh. All right. Well, I think that covers it for our Nindies discussion. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more on the Switch and other things gaming as well. Until next time. Bye.